Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well and welcome back to another lesson in Laravel Blade Components. In this lesson, we're going to learn about attributes. All right, so let's get started. All right, I've got a class-based component called primary right here with a public property called name. And then we put it name in our constructor and in our index view, we basically render that button with the name property. Let's just add the name. We're going to call this one just send. Okay, so let's go to the view of this component and let's render a button and we're going to render basically the name. Okay, so let's see if we can see this button called send me. Right, so as you can see, we've got a button called send me right there. Right, so the question you might ask yourself, how do we add styling to this button? It's quite easy. If we add a class right here, we can do a couple of things. Let's quickly add some styling. Right, so we've got our styling right there. Now, in order to use this styling that we created inside our button right here, we have a nice property called attributes. Right, think of attributes like a bag, where you put everything in it that is on that attributes right there. So just think of it, everything that's in here will be put inside this bag right there. Okay, but now the question that I will pose to you is you see the name right here will be also inside the bag, but the thing is it will check in our class and it will see that the name is already part of the constructor, so it will ignore the name right here. Okay, so just think of it taking everything inside the bag and put it right here. But now if it's that is part of the class, then in the constructor, it will ignore that attribute. Okay, let's quickly see if we can see all the styling on our button right now. All right, so you can see we got our styling all neat and nice. So if we press F12 to our dev tools, if we click on the button right there, you will see it added all the styling except the name attribute. All right, so all good. The next question that you will ask is probably, how can I add a default styling of the button, right? Instead of actually creating another button and adding the same styling, that's kind of pointless. So how can you add a default styling to the button? So let's quickly go there, All right? So what you can do is you can go to the attributes back and you tell that, please go to the class attribute inside that bag okay then add this default styling so let's quickly copy all of that so let's cut it out and paste it in here all right so now what will happen is laravel will get basically the attribute back and it will check if there's a class in there and it will assign these default values to that class okay so what we can do now is we, if we don't have to pass the class in like that but i'm just going to leave it open empty for now so let's quickly see if we can still see the button with the same styling. Right, so as you can see, we've got the button right there. So all good. Now the next thing that we can do is we can add a different styling to the button. So let's quickly add a different background. So Indigo, and uh, let's say 500. Okay, so now what will happen is it will check the attribute back. It will receive all of this. It will obviously remove the name because it's part of the constructor. Then it will say, okay, you've got a class right there, and it will add this uh, basically tailwind class to our attribute right here. Okay, so it adds it right at the end. Okay, the reason for that is let's say we've got the BG green right here. What it will do is it will add a BG indigo at the end right here. Okay, so let me, let me copy this part just to kind of make it visual what's going to happen. It will add it right at the end because what will happen now, it will reach it from here. Whatever is at the end right here, that will be rendered instead of whatever is here. Okay, so let's quickly check that. Okay, so our background is like this. All right, so as you can see, we've got the send me button. It changed to indigo color. So if we press the F12, and as you can see, it added the BG indigo button the color background right there. You can still see the BG green, but remember it reads it from left to right. And whatever is at the end 
All right, the next part right there will have precedence over the previous ones. Okay. All right, so now we've got our classes done. We've got that under our belt. The next thing that we want to know is, well, let's say we want to add a different type. Okay, so now how we will, basically now what will happen is, it will scrape everything. It will remove the name and it will basically add these two to the attribute pack. Okay, because the name is part of our constructor. Okay, forgive me for repeating myself. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to tell you is there's three types of buttons. We've got a um, normal, we've got a button like this, and then we've got a reset, and then we have a submit. All right? That's a th we're obviously not going to write it like this, but I just wanted to show you the different buttons. Okay, now the thing is, you can, let's say in this case, the reset is basically if you want to reset the form, and a submit is actually want to sync the form all right so let's quickly remove this type just set it to nothing so how can we add that attribute in here so we can at the end right here we can do a merge okay so just remember it will still be part of the attributes okay so if we don't even add the merge right here okay so let's quickly add the top let's quickly add the type of button all right Right, as you can see, if we go to the button right there, you can see it still renders the button right here, this part right here. Okay, so as you can see, it merge, it basically take all the attributes, bring them in there, and it will render it right here. So all good. Now the thing is, what you want to do is, let's say you don't want to even add the type right there, okay, and you want a default value. Okay, so we can do this. We can add a merge. All right. And then we can add an attribute called type. Okay, so this is what we want to, but we want the default value to be button. Okay, so that's what that's the default value we want our buttons to be. Or you can want it to be, you can even call this instead of a button, you can be submit. Okay, so you can do whatever you want. But let's say in our case, we want the default type to be button. All right, so what will happen now is it will get all the attributes, it will check the class, and it say, okay, this must be the default. Then it will merge the type to be a default button, like that. Now, if we change this to be a submit, like this. Okay, so what will happen now is it will get all the attributes, like I said with the class, then it will check the merge, it will check the button, and it will say, okay, now this is the default. But since we already receive an attribute called type, it will switch it to be submit right there. Okay, so let's see that. All right, so as you can see, we've got a type of submit right here. Okay, so that's basically how you can add different attributes. I just want to drive the point a little bit further home, right? So that the attribute is basically like scraping and copy everything like that's here and put them inside a bag and put them in here and you can just adjust them right here. Now the thing is, let's quickly add another one just randomly called Joe Soap. All right. Now, just to prove to you that this will actually go inside our attribute bag and put it in here. So let's quickly see in the browser. Right, so as you can see, we got Joe Soap right there. Obviously, this won't do anything because there's no property or attribute called Joe and anything called Soap. All right. So anyways, let's move on to the next part, where, which is anonymous component. Just want to mention this again. So instead of this, this can be data type or whatever the case may be or all that kind of stuff. All right. So let's quickly go to anonymous component. So to go there, to go to views, components, you will see I've got anonymous called a component called link. All right. So let me render this component. Link. like this All right so we got our anonymous component now the thing about this is since it doesn't have any classes like this All right that's the reason for anonymous component but we will still want to pass in the name i remember about the slots i just want to repeat myself i know about slots but in this case i'm just going to use a name one All right i'm going to call this one uh, send link all right now just remember when we let's go to the link let's quickly create an anchor tag all right, we're going to remove the href, okay, and we're going to add the attributes right here. All right, so what this will do is it will take everything that's in here, cut it out, 
and basically put it inside our attributes bank and like that okay but now the thing is i don't want the name to be part of the attribute back okay so how do we fix that all right so let's quickly put the name in here in order to fix that there's another property called props all right this one right here now what it will do is we will say listen we want the props this name attribute right here not to be part of the attributes back we want it to be on its own so that's why we can render it right there so the attributes back will ignore everything that's in the props right there okay so let's quickly go to the link right there and add some classes i'm just gonna do a silly one uh yellow let's do yellow yellow one or 500 400 that will do. right so now what will happen okay so let's quickly see if we can view this one all right so as you can see if we click on the yellow link right there you will see we added a class of bg yellow 400 let's quickly add an href attribute all right so on a link we're going to add an href and we're going to equal that just to a pound so a hashtag okay so let's quickly check all right so as you can see it adds the hashtag at the end right there because it put it all those things in an attribute back now let's say we didn't add the props so what we will expect is the name to be included here as well right so let's remove the prompts refresh that and you will see we add the name send link all right so in order for the attributes back to ignore certain attributes on the property basically on the component we can add it to props like this okay so now we can ignore it so it will not go to the attributes back and everything else is good to go now let's go in here now just remember from the previous one what we can do is we could have add a class like this okay so with some default styling okay so let me quickly do that all right so now we have our default classes all right so now the thing is well so what we can do if we don't want it to the background to be yellow we can change it obviously to whatever we want so let's say in this case we want to background to be um blue 500 okay so it will change to that color all right so you can see it changed to that color okay all good now the next thing that we want to do especially with a link we want to know if the link can be active or not all right let's say the active let's just set it to true all right so if we go inside our component right here and we want the styling to be dependent on if the button is active it needs to be this color if it's not active it needs to be a different color all right in order to do that what we can do is we can use php tags so what that will allow us to do is to allow us to write pure php inside here all right so let's quickly add the variable called classes and we're going to set that to we need to receive that active just remember if we if we don't want to ignore because right now it will take this and it will add it in our attribute back and we don't want that to happen we want this to actually be as a prop all right so let's quickly receive it in here so active like this so what this will do the attribute back will ignore the active like that all right so now what we can do if the active is basically true then do something if it's not we just do false okay so let's quickly add this so if it's true then please add this styling okay just do this if it's true add that styling if it's not true add a different style so let's quickly do that so i'm just going to change the colors Okay, I just changed it to red to be obvious. Now the thing is in the classes, what we can do now is we can basically bring in the classes like this, like that. Okay, so then we can instead of actually having all the conditionals in here, we can write it in PHP tags and we have the conditional to be dependent on that. All right, so let's quickly. I'm gonna make this instead of true. I'm gonna make this one false. I'm gonna remove the class like that. Okay, so let's quickly see if we can do the class depending on if it's true or false active. All right, so as you can see, the button is red right now because active is set to false. Let's turn it to true and it needs to change to yellow. All right, so let's turn it to true right here. 
So basically, if it's true, then it's going to do the yellow. So let's quickly check that. Right, so as you can see, we got yellow right here. So if I refresh, yellow. All right, so that's an end of this episode, guys. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, please ask them for me in the comment section, and I'll see if I can help you out there. And anyway, so like the video, and see you in the next one. Adios.